Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and if you remember, I previously posted a video where uh, I discovered this very odd quantum strut bug, which basically caused the things to become rooted in space, as well as to each other. Well, I decided to see if I could exploit the outfit. Therefore, I present to you my first floating landing base, and we shall take this up and I shall demonstrate it happening. So first thing, of course, is to just thrust up and there we go, not very much happening just yet. In fact, you notice I seem to be running uh, yellow speed for some reason. So if I now press 6 and turn it off, it actually flies. Now, of course, I'm using Mechanical Jeb here just to stabilize this. Uh, it is not the easiest thing to fly, but I'm going to take it up, you know, a little bit of height. Uh, obviously, these panels are not aerodynamic, otherwise I would be having some major issues. They, they don't, they're essentially structural elements with no uh, aerodynamical qualities to them. Not that it would matter much, but uh, this thing flies terribly. I'm also using infinite fuel because we're not really interested in the fuel, to be honest. We're interested in the behavior of these things. Now, if I want to lock this in place now, I actually have to slow the thing down. And so what I'll do is I'll just cut the thrust and then the idea is at the appropriate moment I shall press 6 and that will turn the quantum struts back on. What is the correct moment? The correct moment is when my velocity drops to zero. So I'm just gonna aim for that moment and when it arrives, here we go, 30, 29, 27, and just watching the vertical speed gauge at the top. When that hits zero, we're gonna turn the struts on. There we go, and I should be able to turn this off. And yes, we are in fact floating, supported by the interaction between these struts, these are, uh, not these struts, these trusses, the cubic octagonal tr truss, and these quantum struts. So now I have a landing pad floating in the sky, two kilometers above the, the base. And so we also have a little spacecraft on it, which I can go in and take control of. Now, of course, before I do anything, I'm going to do control from here, then decouple node, and it only flies with RCS, which is, again, also infinite. Just execute this, and no, no, it doesn't want to fly. Am I, push am I controlling the wrong thing? Uh, I am controlling the wrong thing. There we go. This does not have autopilot, so I have to just make do. Let's turn on SAS, though. And there we go, we're flying. Flying away from my uh, floating landing site, supported by the powers of anti-gravity. Now, of course, normally I like to talk about science and things like that, and uh, I'm sure you're, as I'm sure you're aware, anti-gravity isn't exactly science as it is science fiction. So, what can I talk about? Well, interestingly enough, there has been some interesting discussion recently of you know, evidence or lack of evidence for anti-gravity. See, one of the questions that has been asked is, does, we know antimatter has the opposite charge and it travels through time backwards and things like that. But does antimatter follow gravity in the same way, right? Do we find that antimatter will fall away from the gravity so source, so to speak? Will the matter, will the gravity field produced by regular matter repel antimatter? And that's a hard question to answer because antimatter we produce inside particle accelerators and we produce things like positrons and sometimes antiprotons. Both of these have electric charges and that means the force of the electric fields is like vastly more important than the force due to the, the gravity. So to test whether gravity affects antimatter you need to make anti-hydrogen and anti-hydrogen is not the easiest thing to produce. You, when you produce these things in a particle accelerator, they're essentially slamming particles together at something close to the speed of light, right? Well, let's get that there. And so to then produce anti-hydrogen, you have to take a stream of positrons and a stream of anti-protons 
and somehow bring them together and also do so slowly enough that they actually form into anti-hydrogen. Then once this happens, you have the problem that you have now just neutralized the anti-hydrogen, right? Because the positive charge of the positron and the negative charge of the antiproton cancel each other out. So you can't now contain them using electric fields. You have, well, you can, but it's a lot harder to contain them using electric fields. So, um, yeah, there's all this whole whole technology about making anti-hydrogen and then capturing it in an anti-hydrogen trap. And then you have to hold it for long enough that you can cool it down and then let gravity take over. And this is not an easy thing. But recently it was announced that they have constrained the degree to which uh, antimatter will be affected, right, by regular gravity. And they figure out that it's something between minus 30% and plus 130%. So it's probably positive, but nobody knows, nobody can say for sure. So yes, antimatter probably isn't uh, anti-gravity. But the jury is still out. There's still room for error in the charts and all that. Okay, let's, um... Now that we've docked this back, let's see what happens if we fire this at speed. Nice! Everything falls apart. Let's, um... T see if I... Ah, I can't switch vehicles while in the atmosphere. Hey, okay, I got this. Take control. Let's see if I can land this. Control from here. And... Undock. I've got this. Excellent. No. Ha 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 ha. Excellent. I have a fl little flyer now. And I just need to make sure it comes down to the surface with sufficiently low velocity that I do not smash myself in... Wow. It does not... Um, it does not fly fast. It seems to have some serious acceleration issues. Of course, I'm really more constrained by the the fact that time acceleration or whatever, no, lag, lags bane is kicking in big time here. I, I don't know what's going on, but I guess it's probably to do with all the things that are sitting on the surface there. Man, I'm still like a kilometer up. It is, oh wow, this is, this has, this doesn't have much thrust, does it? But I do feel that I want to land it, so uh, why don't I try and move this south? See if I can get it closer to the landing field, and then get this that way. There we go. Now we're moving more or less south. And falling very quickly. As soon as I let go, I start falling at quite a ridiculous rate. This is... It actually flies relatively well if you can uh, take account of the fact that it has almost no thrust. I tell you, it's a big change from the days of Tony Probe when I could build an RCS-based probe that would, you know, fly all the way across the, the Kerbal system and survive and break speed records. RCS has been nerfed quite substantially uh, to a level which actually makes it realistic, so I'm not complaining too much. Yeah, let's just fly this back so we can say mission successful. Uh, not the easiest thing. Okay, I don't want to land too fast though. And uh, this way, this way, this way. No, I want to fly this way now. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, uh. Oh man, come on, come on. Uh, okay, there. Mostly landed safely. Yay! And actually, wait. This bit fell all the way from the sky and is in good nick. What's up with that? Well, it's also important, I guess, to make your landing pad out of something that can survive a fall from two kilometers. Now, there's another trick that you can do with this. So let us go back to the space center for I have another gizmo that I have built. And uh, it is only a proof of concept, but uh, I believe that you might find some interesting tricks with this. Now, where is it? We have Bob, Escape Tower, Fuel Tower. We have the Grav Walker. 
You, I call you Grav Walker. And so this gizmo, well, this gizmo is rather fascinating. Actually, what I'm going to do is grab this and stick it around. Uh, 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 there. I'm going to stick it there for a reason which will become obvious later. So let's launch this thing. Clear the launch pad and proceed. Actually, I've just realized there may be a problem I need to correct now that I grabbed that and took it off. Ah, oh dear. There's never a rest, is there? Uh, let's try this. Deactivate. Deactivates only one of them. Deactivate that one. Deactivates that. I press 6. Yes, those are no longer bound. I need to go back to the space center to fix the binding on these things. Oh, woe is me. Okay, let's go back. Action groups. Action group six, I think, is what, or one? Yes, okay. Quantum strut. I need you to toggle when I ask you to. Uh, reset. Toggle. Quantum strut. Quantum strut. Oh, that, that's apparently a group now. Okay, and this one, that's a group as well. So now we have quantum struts all bound up and ready to go. So we go back to the launch pad. And I'm, I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> it doesn't take a genius. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to right-click on this and turn it off. And I guess I still need to deactivate these individually. But now if I press 6, no, no, 6, 1, yes, turns on, turns off. Wax on, wax off. So now all that remains is we'll turn this one off, detach that. Oh, and apparently it's decided to switch these things. That's not what I asked you to do. Deactivate. Deactivate. Now we are floating free, and now if I turn this, look at that. It is being elevated up, and once it gets up to here, I can go the other way. Whoa, and therefore, I am climbing. How about that, huh? Science applied! So yeah, this is now clearly the way to get off the planet Eve. <laughs> this takes zero fuel to go up. This is, well, I mean, okay, it's vastly less practical than the Infinity Gliders, which I should probably make one of these days. Everybody keeps sending me Infinity Gliders, and I've made several accidentally. I just didn't consider them worth making videos about. Look at that! Climbing it, but a few meters per second. It will take a small eternity to get up to the altitude that we need it at. You notice it also is very hard to steer. Um... The thing has a nasty tendency to kind of fold over in one direction or another. So I'm not sure how high I can get this. I'm just going to try and take advantage of the wobbling and maybe click on it when it wobbles most straight. Uh, there we go. 137 meters up. Look at this. Yes. Um... I think this will take a small eternity to get where we're going. <laughs> we should just turn this thing off completely and let it die. Deactivate. This thing will go, I mean, as far as you want, basically. But this is the way we're going to let it go now. Oh, there. Dead. Well, that's enough of that nonsense. We'll get back to some proper Kerbal Space Program next time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.